I see the comments and requests and I will act on them. Please remember to follow Geography World channel on Instagram and Facebook using the link shown on the screen. Please remember to like, share with your friends and subscribe. For person wishing to contact me privately, you may email me at geographyworld100 at gmail.com. The link will be posted below. Welcome back to Geography World channel. For this video, we'll be looking at the 2019 May-June CSEC Paper 2. Now, we'll be focusing on question 4 for this video. Now, we're shown a pie chart which shows the source of emission of pollutants and we're to answer the questions that follow. So, this is a pie chart and it is showing you the source of emission of air pollutants. Now, question A, part 1 asks, what percent of air pollutants result from the transportation sector? So, right ahead you see transportation. Your answer is 27%. So, 27% um, from the transportation sector. Part 2 asks, what percent of air pollutants result from industry? Go back to the chart and you look for industry. So, you have industry at 52. So, 52% of air pollution results from the industry. Question 3, part 3. What sector contributes the lowest percentage of pollutant to the air? Now, you're going to look for what sector contributes the lowest. So, the lowest is 1% and that is commercial and residential heating. So, commercial and residential heating, they contribute the lowest. Now, part 4. It asks us to suggest one conclusion that can be drawn from the information given in the chart. Now, there are several conclusions that you can draw. The first one I will draw is that industries contribute the most to air pollution, right? So that's 52%. You can talk about commercial and residential heating is the least contributor to air pollution, right? You can talk about the industries. So you can say industries and transportation contributes the most to air pollution. Based on what you can see, you can draw conclusion based on the pie chart. And for that, you should be awarded your two marks. Part B, question B, part one. You're to describe two conditions that are necessary for the formation of coral reefs. Now remember that for coral reefs to be formed, we must have warm sea water between 25 and 27 degrees Celsius. And this is because the cold water will slow down the growth. But if the water is too warm, it will bleach the corals and which will basically eventually kill them. We must have sunlight. Um, sunlight is basically necessary for the photosynthesis in the plant. Coral growth. They grow best at a depth of 20 to 40 meters in water. So, in other words, they need shallow water to grow. And the water must be clean, clear, and well oxygenated. So, let me just go over. They need warm water, 25 degrees to 27 degrees Celsius. They need sunlight. Um, the water must be shallow between 20 and 40 meters. And the water must be clean, clear, and well oxygenated. Part 2 asks that we outline two ways in which coral reefs protect the coastal region in the Caribbean. Now, ways in which coral reefs protect the coastal region in the Caribbean include, one, now the coral reef they act as a buffer zone that protects the coast by absorbing violent wave impacts of ocean ocean storms and hurricanes so they act as a buffer zone which basically absorb the strong currents and waves that are coming from tropical storms and hurricanes two it helps to prevent the coastline from coastal erosion from flooding and damages to shore properties so it basically helps to protect the coastline from coastal erosion flooding and damages to shore properties so once you're able to list any two 
with a little explanation, you should be able to get the four marks. Question C asks us to explain two ways in which agriculture contributes to the degradation of the coral reefs in the Caribbean. Now, chemicals that are used, such as pesticides and fertilizers, they can seep into the underwater system and make their way to the seas and ocean where they cause coral reefs to die. Now, loose soil associated with the agricultural sector as well can be washed into the ocean, causing them to become muddy, which prevents sunlight, thus causing the corals to die. And some chemicals used in the agricultural sector, they do not dissolve, hence they will eventually become sedimentation, which can cover corals and kill them. So they, because they don't dissolve, they become sediments, right? And these can basically cover the corals and cause them to die. So let's look at question D. Question D asks us to discuss two measures that have been implemented at the national level of most countries to ensure the sustainability of coral reef and we are to use examples to support our answers. Now, reef in the Caribbean, they are protected in several ways, including the first one is that they are deemed protected areas and are classified as World Heritage Sites, such as the Belize Barrier Reef. So the, Bel the barrier reef of the coast of Belize is basically classified as a World Heritage Site. And once it's classified as a World Heritage Site, it is protected. We have other coral reefs in the Caribbean that are protected by the government. So that is one way. Now in Bermuda, the government closed the, f closed the pot fishing industry. So pot fishing is a very dangerous um, fishing practice used for the catching of fish in the coral reef area so what they have done is that they have banned the pot fishing industry so they said listen there is no more pot fishing industry in the coral reef so this has significantly helped to basically save corals in bermuda they also developed um, because the coral reefs are protected they develop coral reef reserves and parks all over the caribbean so these Reserves and parks are developed in a way so that the corals can grow effectively while human, yes, they can go and they can still look at them, but the reefs are fully protected. And in the Caribbean, for some islands, fishing in the reefs are seasonal. So, for example, the first three months, January to March, you let's say that's the fishing season, so you can go and you can fish within the coral reef and then you have a six month break and then the last three months in the year you can go again and fish so they have a seasonal structure for fishing within the coral reefs now if you were able to answer all these questions and expound on them then you should be able to basically get the 25 marks now CXC is not hard, it just requires a lot of studying and a lot of explanation so that you can basically ascertain the marks that are required. For the persons who are in the comment section, I wish you all the best on your exam, ladies and gentlemen. And let me tell you, do not feel defeated because if you feel defeated before even started, then you will be defeated. However, I know that each and every student, once they enter the examination room, I plead the blood of Jesus over you and I hope in the name of the Lord that you will pass your exams. And I'm hoping that after the examination, I can look in the comment section and I can see all the students posting that they did exceptionally well and when the results are out, I want to see all the students telling me, Miss, I got a grade one or a grade two, right? I know that you all will pass the exam. Good luck. We are at the end of this video. Thank you for watching and please remember to like, share, subscribe and turn on your post notification bell in order to receive more videos like these. 
leave comments below suggesting topics that you would want me to present on. In the comment section below, comment the name of your school and the territory for a shout out in my next video. Until then, bye!